Backtesting is an excellent tool that can provide you a perspective of how successful an algorithmic trading strategy is. In this short video, I'm going to explain to you what backtesting is, the key points to know when doing backtesting, and how you can backtest an algorithmic trading strategy. Hey there traders, it's a pleasure to be with you all and as I was mentioning before, in this video, we're going to cover all the principles behind backtesting a trading strategy. Now, as you may know, I like to start things at a very basic level and for this we're just going to ask ourselves, what is backtesting? Well, backtesting basically is the method utilized or used to know the performance of an expert advisor or algorithmic trading model. Now that we know what backtesting is, this immediately takes us to the next question. How does backtesting work? And basically, backtesting assesses the success of a trading strategy by discovering how it will perform utilizing historical data. If we were to put this on different words, basically we will take the parameters, the considerations that this strategy has and utilize those on previous price action. You probably are asking yourself, well, what are the benefits of backtesting? Well, what it will do is that it will provide to the traders and investors, if the results are favorable of this backtesting, it will provide confidence that this strategy will work in the future. If we were to get a little bit theoretical, basically uh, the theory behind backtesting indicates that any strategy that worked favorably in the past is likely to work positively in the future. On the other side, if the strategy is not successful, most likely it will not work in the future. As with trading in general, the essence behind backtesting is to have a positive relation between the risk that is taken in order to generate some sort of reward. To clarify this dynamic, let's just play a couple of examples um, saying that I go to a hedge fund or any investment a board telling them that I have this excellent algorithmic strategy which has generated a million dollars in return. Well, most likely the first question that is going to arise from this hedge fund or to whomever I'm uh, trying to sell this strategy is how much capital did you have or you had in order to generate this million dollars? Now, if I get to tell, well, basically my account had a balance of hundred million dollars, well, this is gonna be kind of like a down, <laughs> not gonna be as a successful strategy as this one million dollars, even though in nominal value could sound a lot, well, it's just 1%. This is going to be a key point that later on we're going to touch in, which basically any return that we're talking about in finance has to be brought up in percentage terms because then otherwise nominal can be a little bit deceptive, right? That's actually one of the tools that most of the um, people that are trying to sell strategies utilize. You can, oh, wow, using this system, you can generate fifteen hundred dollars uh, weekly well you gotta take into consideration how much capital was needed and of course the second point which is in line with risks we touched a little bit about this in the previous slide but let's just expand a little bit more and let's just say that i have this excellent trading strategy that generated 60 percent return over a year well then the next question is going to be from the board well how much risk did you take in order to generate that 60 percent return and if i tell them well my standard deviation the, the standard deviation of the returns is 30 percent and the maximum drawdown that these account incurred during this year period of this yearly period it was uh 50 then of course it's gonna arise um a lot of uncertainty and most likely any hedge fund or, or uh, investment board is not going to be that excited about this strategy because in order to generate this which could be considered high returns there was a lot of risk generated after having covered the risk and reward side of a trading strategy, this of course brings us to the search of alpha. I'm not going to go elaborate too much in what alpha is, but basically what we are trying to do whenever looking for a, a trading strategy, we want to generate that excess return over what will be considered a, a benchmark risk. Now that we're here on the trading platform into trader I got to bring up two points the first one being that I had already downloaded this expert advisors with the whole uh, purpose of this example the second one is that the first period of time that we are utilizing is kind of 
an ideal time for this strategy and this brings up the point that not just because you are utilizing expert advisors that means that you just are gonna let the computer run and you're not gonna have to do anything you still need to know what kind of expert advisor you're utilizing and when to utilize this expert advisor having said that um, we are gonna bring up Let's just go from the beginning. Go to the view section and then you are gonna activate the strategy tester um, section. You can do this either by clicking or you, or you can utilize Control R. Both of those options work properly. And in this case, this is gonna bring up the strategy tester section, right? Um, we're gonna be using this as stochastic expert advisor, basically in which we're gonna be buying whenever there's an oversold um, situation and the period of time, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. We're gonna be utilizing the Euro against the, uh, the United States dollar, the dollar. Uh, this is not the only one that you can use. You can use any other currency that you want to utilize this expert advisor on. On the model, um, it's recommended that you utilize every tick. Every tick, I'm sorry. This will give it more precision to the model and better quality. Uh, this is one point that actually we're going to touch on later on. And you, whenever back testing, you want to have the best possible data that you can. Because if not, then your results cannot be... Um, in some sort of way a ideal reflection of how the strategy the strategy would have performed as i said you will click every tick um, the date as mentioned before we are actually going to be initially testing this strategy from um july the first part of july to the end of august which if we get to see on the chart it will represent this high uh, positive um trading environment for the euro against the dollar if we were to utilize any trading strategy that is going long and generally speaking it will perform pretty well right having said that it's going to be utilizing a time frame of five minutes and taking into consideration current spreads during that period of time we uh, of course we can go to the expert properties and over there we will we will be able to modify um, the configurations based on what each trade is set up. I'm not gonna go over that. That's up to you on how do you select the ideal um, properties. Of course, trying to not overfit. We'll go through that in a little bit, and after that, we can or we uh, click start. Um, this, of course, is gonna start bringing up. We're collecting the data needed for this period of time and. We're gonna go over it again so that you can have a clear perspective of ones that we click on the start button all the trades are gonna be um, coming in another thing you can do uh, whenever checking if uh, how the results are coming in is that you can go to the graph section and this of course is gonna bring up a, a representation of how either positive or negatives the the trades are uh, coming in and having the report finished we can go to the section or having the the time, the time finish, and uh, we can go to the uh, report section. We're in here. This is a key part that we want to analyze. If, whenever taking to go to say consideration, if a trading strategy is successful. With that in mind, now we're gonna go over the f critical points ho of this report. Actually, for this section, you guys don't need to see me at all. I'm gonna take away my camera. And uh, the first part that it's of relevance is the quality of the model. As a rule of thumb, you want to have at least a quality that it's 90%, and that's because you don't want to get any inaccurate data about a strategy or for, or an expert advisor. You want to you want it to be as reliable as possible. The second key point to take a look into is the returns, right? And as we mentioned before, of course, you want to take into account the percentage level of this. And for that, we can utilize our calculator. It's a very simple process. You just gotta uh, divide the total net profit by the initial deposit. In this case, um, it will turn out to be a four, uh, 84 percentage return. Of course, uh, this is a strategy that it's buying whenever there was, when there was a, a super positive tr upside trend. Um, this not doesn't necessarily is a representation of how successful uh, an algorithmic trading strategy has to be. It's just taking into consideration uh, one period of time, and the profit factor is going to be the level or the relationship between your gross profit and your gross loss. Of course, uh, you want it to be you want it to be uh, above. One in this case, if we divide um, our gross profit by our gross loss, it turns out to be 3.65. Our 
total trades that's a key point that's another key point you want him to be at least uh, as a minimum 20 trades because you don't want uh, again to have a misrepresentation of a trading strategy being successful when in reality well there was just two trades and i mean those two happen to be positive and you get an excellent return well that's not as a that's not an ideal representation of a trading system you want him to be at least uh, 20 trades uh, the expected payoff will be based on the amount of total net profit divided by the uh, amount of trades. In this case, if we divide 347 by 30, this will bring a, an expected payoff per trade. Uh, or this could basically be for every trade that I take, you will expect to have a, a, a payoff of $11. Another key point will be uh, having taken into consideration the quality of the model, the returns of the model. Of course, now we get into the risk part of things. Well, you don't want to have any maximal drawdown that it's above 20%. Why is that? Well, basically, you don't want to incur in too much risk because what if the um, strategy just happens to finish at that point and you incur in a 50% loss? Well, in order, just by the law of percentages, in order to recover that loss, uh, that's that at 50% loss, well, you have to make up, might make it up with a hundred percent return, which can be um, can can be a little bit complicated sometimes. Therefore, you want to uh, try to mitigate risk as much as possible. That should be your your first um, your first goal whenever uh, trading algorithmically. And uh, after having said that, another point that you want to take into consideration, and in here it can be a little bit different depending on whether you are taking. Uh, a momentum strategy or a, a reversal strategy i mean we 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 for sure we know that um momentum strategies tend to uh, depend on a couple of trades that have large profit trades and a bunch of uh, smaller uh, negative trades um, but uh, one of the things that you want to uh, try to keep as much as possible is to have an average consecutive wins higher than the consecutive losses that basically trying to prevent depending on just one trade um, saving your entire results you want it to be as consistent as possible now that we cover this uh, first example which happened to be very successful because we were overfitting it or we were utilizing this strategy of a period of time that uh, should be very successful now we're going to cover this same trading strategy over a different period of time just for the sake of bringing up the fact that not just because you're utilizing an expert advisor that means that you don't have to do anything you still need to know when and uh, when do you utilize expert advisors and how you're going to be configuring them for that specific period of time previously we covered the period of time from july to the end of august which as we see in in our screen that was a pretty um uh, positive momentum for the euro against the dollar but what if now we take into consideration um december i'm sorry september the whole month of september right in which there wasn't really any upside momentum we have a strategy that is just buying of course uh, now that we uh, have this different period of time where the strategy is not as successful let's just take into account how the results come in so Go. now we have it we're gonna utilize the same uh, trading uh, properties or the properties for this expert advisor and as we can see on the screen of course uh, there isn't gonna be that many many trades and actually uh, well as we can see the the returns weren't as favorable as with the first strategy the model the quality of the model was uh, a good one the amount of consecutive wins well not at all in line with what the consecutive uh, the average consecutive losses were so um, of course we have a negative return we have a maximal drawdown that it's above uh, 20 percent so we have all those uh, red flags knowing that uh, well it's not a successful strategy right just because we first were utilizing this trading strategy or this ea over a, a positive um, period of time and then not in a uh, a trading environment where this trading uh, advi uh, expert advisor will be as successful that uh, of course is for the sake of bringing up the perspective of not just because you're utilizing expert advisors that means that you are not going to be doing anything you still need to know when and how to utilize those it's just another tool of how you can um, uh, trade the algo way per se now that we uh, saw the two different case scenarios on where uh, 
an expert advisor could be successful and when can it not uh, i wanted to share with you uh, guys another tool that is very helpful whenever um, figuring it out how to configure your expert advisor and that's going to be the visual mode it's going to be a little bit um, slower in terms of like loading the traits and and that part of the the process however this is gonna allow us to have a better idea when um when uh, when we're kind of like in the configuring process know if our stop losses are established at a proper level of course um you gotta include the um, indicator that it's triggering the trades in this case it was an oscillator that it was buying whenever there were oversold situations um of course we can speed up the process a little bit let's just do that and in here on the screen we'll be uh, we'll see whenever the the trades were activating how close our stop levels were how adequate our take profits levels were and as i was mentioning before um, this is an excellent tool once that you kind of like have already an idea what is what you want to do for you to have a, a representation of whereas your trade levels are adequate or you should optimize a little bit uh, more the way you are configuring your trading system now that we went through the back testing process of a trading strategy, let's go over again the key factors that you have to pay into attention whenever uh, reviewing the model. And of course, the first one that comes into mind is the quality of the model. You don't want anything that it's under 90% because basically that will be uh, taking uh, the results of an accurate process. The total positions, you don't want anything that has to do with uh, less than 20 trades because uh, once again it's not an ideal representation if a trading a strategy is consistent or not they return of course don't take anything based on their nominal value everything has to be on percentage basis maximal drawdown you don't want to incur uh, in a lot of risk as a rule of thumb don't go or don't try any strategies that incur on a on a maximal drawdown about above 20 percent and the consecutive positive positions greater than the consecutive negative positions basically here you don't want to depend on a single home run that is just going to bring all the returns that could potentially lead in a process where uh, that home run never comes in and you incur in a lot of negative trades and average winning positions higher than average losing positions here you can play a little bit with it because as we know i mean there could be um strategies that depend on more kind of like momentum where you know you will incur in a couple of uh, negative trades and eventually you'll have a bigger trade that's pretty much the key factors that you want to take into consideration when back testing last but not least now we're going to cover some additional tips and the first one will be uh, reserve a period of time of historical data for testing purposes um, basically if successful tested on alternative if the strategy is successful tested on alternative time frames are out of sample data to help confirm the feasibility of the strategy basically you use it on a period of time and try it uh, on another period of time just to make sure that it actually is, is, uh, is a successful strategy and is not overfitted for a certain period of time uh additionally be careful with the martingale I, that's one of the things that i've noticed a lot that it's offered on the market and basically martingale can be successful but at the same time can be can incur in high risks therefore be very careful with it and be be careful of trading strategies or expert advisors that are overfitted or over optimized strategies where they mention just traded with this certain instrument at a certain hours at a certain trading time what happens if market conditions change which eventually will change well that strategy is going to stop working and then it's just going to be an unsuccessful strategy and that could lead into negative um, periods of periods of trading times Ladies and gentlemen, and that will be all for my part. I hope that this information was helpful. And if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate in sharing them with us on the comment section. I hope that you all have a great day. Thank you so much.